Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Emu Chicken of Team Pandora. Living in Japan is pretty neat, unless you want to hook up your Amiga. Having a PAL machine like this, it's very difficult to get running with most Japanese TVs. Then to add, we have the legacy video outputs. For $30 or so, you can get a cheap solution, but as the pixels move, they become oil paint. On the GitHub, we have a solution by Jockel71, the Amiga 600 version of RGB to HDMI. This adapter with a Raspberry Pi Zero board should give us perfect video straight from the Amiga itself. We got our adapter from Retro32 website, and I got the Pi Zero from an online auction. Took around a week to get to my front door, and this is what we got. And the Pi Zero, of course. Pick this up for about 15 bucks. Here's the adapter itself. And this connector here is where the Pi slots in. These nipples on the bottom should hold it in place. And this slot here is for the ribbon cable. This will send data to our Raspberry Pi, which will process it out to HDMI. If we can, we'll use this mount too. I think it's about time to open up the Amiga. This one only has four screws, as I've lost the rest. You really screw that up. Okay, let's flip her over. Then let's give her a shake. Shake it, baby. Make sure to unplug the LED. And be careful with any ribbon cables. This one has the Furia accelerator installed, as well as an SD card installed as a hard disk. You don't need any of these for RGB to HDMI to work. However, we'll need to take out the Furia to get to our chip. This little do for here plugs directly onto our Super Denise. If possible, you should clean first with IPA, but simply, I can't be asked. Extremely dirty. Just I like the ladies on the side. Surprisingly, there is enough room for both. Next step we'll need to do is attach the pie. This in there. Let's take these screws out. Screw, 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 screw. Push it in. Be careful not to bend any pins. Easy does it. And then screw it tight. We'll use a reliable SanDisk microSD with software loaded from the GitHub. With these two pins here, we can hook up our switch. The slot for the ribbon cable will need to be primed. Now we can push it in. We place it around here. And for our pins that we mentioned earlier, we'll use a male to female DuPont cable. This can be fed through to reach our expansion port for easy access. For the time being, we'll use this crappy switch that hurts my fingers. I bet you wear little girly panties. Eventually, I'll switch it for an arcade button. And to protect it from shorting, I'll wrap it with some tape. Now it comes to the HDMI mount. If we want to use this, we'd need to unsolder this little box here. And frankly, I can't be asked. So what we'll do is feed this mini HDMI to HDMI cable through the floppy disk drive. Smart. Then plug it into the Raspberry Pi Zero. Now we should be able to close it. Don't forget to plug in the LED lights. Like a glove. Now to screw it back together. And that's it, we're ready. Here we have one Amiga 600, ready for new tellies. When we turn it on, we're first greeted to this screen here. A good sign that our RGB to HDMI is working fine. Here's Workbench. At first the screen may be distorted. We need to go to Auto Calibrate Video Sampling. Hold our switch down and let it do its thing. Once finished, the distortion should have cleared and then we can check some of the other options. We can change resolution, adjust scaling, crop slash zoom, as well as scanline settings. Once you've finished setting the options, make sure you save or you'll need to redo options next boot. So far so good, this is looking great on this monitor. Let's test out some games in AGS. We 
And we're gonna hit up Fire and Ice. Okay, so this feels great. The RGB to HDMI introduces no latency. Perfect. Here we've added the scanline filter. You can adjust the strength of the black lines that goes across the screen. If you prefer to have a softer image, you can use the soft scalar option. This is the image going straight into the capture card. And if it looks like frames are skipping, that's probably the capture card. On my monitor, it's buttery smooth. Here's a bit of barbarian. Swordplay. Kinky. I do this with Beverly every now and then. Easy way to win this game, hold fire and left. Bit of gym power in Mutant Planet. Revenge of the Muted Camels. And lastly, some Jesus on ease. Let's bring on the MC. Here's John Luke. Hey you fools, I'm John Luke. I can keep on rapping, I definitely am no fluke. Fancy an Amiga that can help you trip balls. Well, try this out, it rules them from supercars to Turek and John Luke has the power to do your mom crap your pants or ruin your laundry. Let's all hear it for Team Panda here. Yeah, thanks, John. That was awesome. It's all original work from my mouth hole. The RGB to HDMI. Should you get one? A definite yes. Do not settle for anything less. Let me do the rhyming. As always, here's a quick thank you to all of those on our Patreon. We appreciate all of your support, and we cannot thank you enough. You guys are awesome. Thanks for that, John. No problem. We mainly focus on fixing the Pandora boxes, but we also like to dabble in emulation, guides, and reviews. So if you like what you see, please consider joining. You can also hit that like and maybe the subscribe. If you do, I might be able to get you a date with 7 of 9. R. R indeed. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra. R. Indeed. Kinky. I, 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 I do Beverly from time to time. <laughs>